Aiden Tidwell, known as Niles, is a player who came into the 2021 LCS year as a very hyped prospect and got a spot in the LCS as Golden Guardian's starting top laner. In the preseason LCS in-houses set up by Anero, the Golden Guardian's coach, Niles was one of the top performers and a standout, regularly beating much of his competition that he'd be facing in the LCS. The previous two years, he had spent on the top collegiate team and had won basically every tournament that he had participated in. Niles with Maryvale competed in an international tournament as well, getting second place, admittedly against other collegiate teams. In his time in the LCS Spring Split, his team was the worst team in the LCS, sitting at only three wins. This resulted in fans looking for somebody to find out what went wrong with the team. So they looked to stats. And according to these statistical analysis by fans, Niles was the worst player to ever play in the LCS on the basis of KDA. This KDA stat is extrapolated by these sort of plebs in order to say that Niles is the worst player to ever play in the LCS. This fan perspective affects players' careers, and many team orgs don't really understand the game either, so they will rely on fans' opinions for decisions. Uh, regardless of this sort of statistical analysis, many experts within the scene rate Niles very, very highly, so where is the disconnect there? I use the Niles question as a litmus test to determine what quality you are as an analyst. If you're somebody who thinks that Niles is one of the worst players in the LCS, it says a lot about your analytical skills and your eye test for the game. It really just says that you don't have one. Whereas if you think that there's something there with Niles, if you think that he's potentially a pretty good player, then there might actually be something there because it's not a popular opinion to hold. It's not opinion that's going to get you clicks. Um, but if you just look at the game with the eye test, it's definitely, uh, an opinion that many experts hold for a reason. Clubs think that he's the worst player ever. Uh, experts think that there's definitely something there. In this video, I'm going to explain how statistics can lie to you, how liars use statistics, and other ways that you can use to actually properly analyze the game. Um, statistics should only at most be used to start the conversation, not end it. In this situation with Niles, the community has ended the conversation with the stats. Um, with that being said, let's look into the narrative on this from the perspective of the fans. So we're going to look at this Reddit thread right here, which is probably the best example of the amalgamation of community opinion on Niles as a player and his stats. According to this, with this here, he has the most deaths and fewest kills, which is true. All of these stats are true. Um, and basically, the person writing this is using this as a way to say that Niles is the worst player ever in the LCS. You'll look at other players that he's compared to, and he's by far at the bottom with a 1.1 KDA. And you'll look at some comments where people are saying things like, KDA doesn't matter, is so trolling. KDA within a certain range doesn't matter, like having the first or the fifth. Uh, having the worst KDA definitely matters. Uh, you'll get opinions like that, and then you'll see things like, then who is Niles worth? Who is a worse player who's ever been in the LCS compared to Niles relative to their competition? There's no, uh, according to this guy, there's no worse player who's ever been in the LCS, looking at how the stats are from one player to another. And you'll see this a lot, is that people are constantly saying that he's just the worst player we've ever seen in the LCS. But this is an opinion only held by people who don't have any credibility. People who have credibility have very high opinions of him. And this is really just to show what kind of opinions you'll see throughout uh, fans. And then, so we're going to look at stats right now to see what the context is for these stats, because context is the most important thing. This is just taking a single statistic, which is KDA, and then not having any other statistics. So we're just going to look at a couple statistics to have a little bit more context, 
And this is not even looking at actual in-game eye test player analysis in that way. If you look at KDA for the entire league, every single member of Golden Guardians is in the bottom five. So it's not like his team is amazing or anything. His entire team just doesn't work, and his entire team is very poor. So having the worst KDA makes a lot more sense when you're going to be on the worst team in the LCS. Uh, this is just one example of a stat. But then you also look at many other um, statistics. Really, just League of Legends is not a team deathmatch game. KDA isn't the only metric to view a player, and context within the team is important. And it's incredibly hard to look good as a top laner on the worst team. You're often there stuck on an island, and if you don't have any resources, like, everything will just go against you. Um, Niles is also known as a carry top laner, but he didn't play many carries at all throughout the split. So let's look at a stat that might explain why. Counterpick rate is basically the rate at which you are able to pick your champion before the enemy top laner. And counterpick rate for top laners, Niles is by far at the bottom with a seven uh with a 28% counterpick rate. So he has the lowest counterpick rate out of any top laner as a carry player, as somebody who's known as a carry player. But then let's look at the opposite of this. Who on his team is getting the high counterpick rate? Um and newbie has the highest counterpick rate in the entire LCS tied with perks. And I don't know about you guys, I don't think that newbie and perks are really comparable players in terms of skill. Um, in terms of how much you should probably be playing around the players. Uh, so this statistic is going to be really important. Let's go back to it. And then let's look at a couple other statistics from this. If you look at kill share rate, Niles has the um, lowest kill share rate out of any top laner, out of any player in the LCS who's not a support player. So he has the lowest amount of his team's kills out of any player. But then you also look at that stat compared to another stat, which is kill participation. And Niles has the uh, second highest kill participation out of any top laners in the league, only second to um, Impact, who had an amazing split. He had a, he had a career-defining year, Impact did. So despite having the lowest kill share, he also had the highest kill participation. So that makes a lot of sense, with also a low counterpick rate, that he's playing very heavily to try to get his team ahead. And so that has to be taken into account for when you look at a stat like KDA. Having a high kill share um, while also, or having a low kill share while also having high kill participation implies something about how the team was playing around it. And when you see um, what newbie's counterpick rate is, it seems like they're playing pretty heavily to try to help newbie be as good as he can be. And there's another really interesting statistic to look at, which is probably one of the most telling, in that among top laners, Niles has a 1.2 CS difference at 10, which is the fourth highest in the league. So despite him getting constantly counterpicked, constantly put on engaged champions, and also not having a jungler who participates much at all, who his jungler iconic has half of the kill participation at 15 compared to his other two sort of peers at the bottom of the LCS standings in uh, Broxa and Jose Diodo. So despite having no help from his team, Niles on average wins his lane alone with no resources. And so that says a lot about the player, that despite having such a low KDA, you can have that amazing of a results. 
Like that that really does imply a lot about what was actually going on. And so looking at all of these other different stats without looking at anything about the game and any kind of eye test, this completes an entirely different picture. Cherry picking stats, cherry picking a single stat and using that to create, create an entire narrative about a player is incredibly disingenuous and it leads to bad conclusions. These false narratives do impact players' careers. Team orgs often don't know anything about the game themselves and rely on fan opinions. This is a big, this is just one of the big reasons why you shouldn't ever use stats as your primary argument. They can and will lie to you, and liars use statistics all of the time. Stats are also the only form of analysis that fans can do, to be fair. Since they don't know, since the average fan doesn't know enough to actually have a proper eye test, which is the only actual valid test, they have to rely on stats. Stats can't be put into context if you don't have a system for understanding the game, which is something that only high-level players are going to be able to have. This is where the eye test and expert analysis comes in. It was rumored that during the entire spring split, GGS Golden Guardians had great scrim results, winning maybe like 60% of their games despite being the bottom team. And that's alluded to by Anero, the head coach, in an interview with Travis Gafford in the midseason. Even within the LCS games, though, no expert would say that Niles or his high deaths were the reason that they were losing games. Uh, let's look at one expert opinion here. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what people are looking at when they're looking at all the landing phases across the lock-in tournament and genuinely think Niles is playing bad. I, I don't know. It's really he weird. May, he may. Yeah, so how can you possibly say as an expert that Niles is playing these laning phases poorly? Um, that's generally what you see from many, many different experts is that it's not Niles playing these laning phases poorly that's really causing a lot of the like deaths and issues in the lane. And while it is true that there were some deaths that were not really caused by any kind of thing, that's something that was also pretty fixable. And... Um, Niles, not considered the reason the Golden Guardians was doing poorly. And teams would put many resources into countering Niles as well, so that's going to make his stats look bad. Let's look at what Golden Guardians' weaknesses were considered by experts. So then when we look at Golden Guardians, where, where, where do we see their needed I, okay, areas so, of growth going dude, into the regular I, I, season? If there's one player I'm going to flame on this team, it's going to be Newbie. I think Newbie is not good right now. Like, just, it doesn't feel like he's an LCS player when I'm watching him. Um, just, like, the, just the way he moves around the map, his map movements seem very weird. And then also just, like, his, his um, idea of how you should play team fights doesn't seem like it's there like he goes for a lot of like the, the timing that he throws his skill shots doesn't seem like he's used to playing against really good players because if you throw like a hook if you're if you're a thresh and you start a fight by trying to throw a hook when they see you in the middle of the river you're literally just seeing yourself because no no pro player is gonna hit get hit by like a random hook like that when you're so newbie by many experts is considered the worst performing player in the lcs in that split he also takes many draft resources with the highest counterpick rate in the league, like we said before, and he's on Niall's team. If you have what is considered the worst LCS player on your team, which already isn't uh, great, the player, taking all of your resources, you aren't going to look great. Newbie, despite uh, Newbie being such a poor player in spring, is also probably why. Golden Guardians had to draft Niles on engage tanks all split, since Newbie couldn't be relied upon for these engages. You'll see just with Dom's um, analysis right there is that when he's playing Thresh, he can't be relied on to make these sort of like hooks and stuff. So if the engage isn't going to come from support, a reliable engage has to come from top lane. And so all of a sudden you're putting a carry player on something that they're not the best at. And despite that, Niles still has a winning lane on average, regardless. Niles having half of the kill participation at 15 
compared to his other two rivals also means that you're not really going to get any help from him. And this is something that Niles alluded to in an interview with the Proving Grounds podcast in the middle of the season, where he basically said that Iconic would never really play for lanes, and he would just be playing his own game, and that's what he would be focusing on. Um, so... This is also a great way to not look like you are the problem on a team. It's all too common for LCS players to play the game for KDA and make it not look like you're the worst player on the team. This playing for job security doesn't lead to winning games. I'm not saying that Iconic specifically did that. It just seems like it's part of his playstyle. But you're going to not look as bad if you're not making plays. And so Niles, as an example, wouldn't be somebody who plays for KDA. If he thought a game was hard, he'd take riskier plays that could get his team back into the game. Many players would just sit under turret and lose the game slowly. That's a, uh, just as a comparison, you'll see that being a difference between LCK and LPL. Whereas if many LCK teams are behind, they'll just slowly lose and bleed out and not take any risky plays. Whereas LPL teams, even if they're behind, they'll still take a 20% chance to win fight because that's the only chance that they can actually have to get back into the game. In the lead up to the summer split, it's rumored basically that they were planning on only replacing Newbie with Chime, who's a, another rookie. Um, and I'm going to assume that... This situation with Golden Guardians was probably similar to the CLG Bud Light situation, <coughs> where upper management forced a change within the team. They probably had to force a change, uh, any change that could get them a player that was considered more experienced. In the same sense, CLG didn't know who they were going to replace. If you look at the Bud Light video, they just say, a player is going to get replaced. And DeMonte is probably the only player who is actually available to get put onto the team that had some kind of LCS veteran experience, world's experience. Um, so it's just probably pure happenstance that it was Pobelter being the person removed from CLG. Golden Guardian sim uh, situation, probably very similar, where upper management of Golden Guardians probably forced the on-the-ground team of Golden Guardians to replace a player, um, regardless of really kind of who it is. And Solo was the only player who... Solo was the player who replaced Niles. He's the only player who has world's experience and LCS uh, veteran experience that was willing and able to join the team. Um, I'd probably postulate that Golden Guardians also reached out to somebody like Meteos, and if he had been available and been willing to join, then they would have replaced Iconic instead of Niles. CLG also reached out to Meteos at the end of 2020, but he declined due to not wanting to play on a bad team. I'd probably say that it could be a situ similar situation here. If you don't consider Dom or LS as experts on the game, let's take the opinion of Alfari. Fudge not good? No, no, I said Fudge and Huni are the best. I mean, Niles as well when he was in the league, but you know, fucking NAGM to my rats. So that is Alfari, who is by far considered the best top laner in the league, basically calling Niles a top four laner in the LCS. But the reason that he was taken off of the team is because of poor NA uh, GM management. And that's, that also leads credence to the sort of speculation that I had before. Alfari also has no reason to make this statement. Defending Niles isn't some popular thing in the community. There's no kind of clout attached to it. He would only be saying this if this was something that he genuinely believed. And if you look at sort of statistics about how good Niles does in lane, despite having no resources, it makes sense why he would think that Niles is such a good player. If you look at many situations where 
Golden Guardians is playing against uh, TSM. There was, uh, even in the LCS games, Niles was outperforming Huni many, many times and just didn't necessarily have the team around him to actually make it work. And these are just some of the statements that are public. I've heard many statements in private of him being a good player in very similar aspects. Uh, despite stats argument being the weakest ones, they are given extremely high validity in the eyes of the community and team orgs. There have been situations in which LCS teams will hire an analyst who is a Gold 4 statistics graduate who makes super fancy, elaborate, long documents about a team that doesn't actually tell you anything about the game. And they'll hire that person over an actual high-level challenger analyst who has real provable game knowledge and can actually help a team improve. Uh, the problem is, is that these team orgs in charge of hiring don't have any good game knowledge. So they'll see the statistics chart and put a ton of value on that because the challenger analyst who actually understands wave states, understands matchups, understands how to actually play the game, there is no real way for somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about to actually prove that. So the stats are going to look better. They're going to say, hmm, yes, the stats, this is good information. Despite it all being crap data. Like, the data of Power of Evil taking blue buff on average 10 minutes into the game doesn't do anything for your team. But that's the kind of things that you'll see in a lot of these documents. And in this situation as well, just a, another way to illustrate it, this Gold 4 statistics graduate that got hired for the team doesn't have the ability to put any context to his stats because he doesn't actually understand the game and doesn't really have any way to put the pieces together. Every once in a while, you'll hear statements from pro, play pro players having useless analysts who have nothing to offer about the game. And these same analysts, or these same organizations that are hiring these analysts, are the same ones that are listening to fan narratives and making judgments about them. Niles definitely isn't a Zoom 369 or a Nuguri that's just on a bad team. But he's definitely somebody who belongs in the LCS. And on a decent team, it's very likely, um, if not... It's very possible, if not likely, that he'd be in the top half of the LCS. Based on what you see from uh, rumored scrim results, from opinions of Alfari, how he's actually performing in the lane and looking at what is going on in the real game from the opinions of analysts and experts. And another piece of context, really just to put this all kind of together, for the situation of Niles is that um, Spring Split 2021 was Niles' first split, and it was also during lockdown. And Niles is somebody who's very kind of known for um, needing to go to the gym for stress relief. He's talked about this many times. And during 2021 in the lockdowns, gyms were closed in LA due to COVID restrictions. And as any gym bro would know, if you don't go to the gym after being so used to it, it just completely destroys your mentality. And that's obviously going to have an effect on your performance in-game. So ultimately, I'm really just kind of making this video to show why statistical analysis probably isn't the best way to view the game, and what um, the difference can be between stats and actual expert analysis. And looking at these differences, it's really hard to say that Niles is actually as bad of a player that the fan community perception is making him out to be. So thank you guys all for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you guys think that Niles is going to be in the LCS year, in the LCS next year? Or do you think that teams will still buy into the fan narrative and not pick him up? despite him being better than half the, half the top laners in the LCS, according to many experts such as Alfari. See you guys all in the next video. Let me know what you guys think. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. And good night.